Okay, okay. Our last two shapes, which technically is three shapes, you'll understand as I get through this, are trapezoids and kites. Okay, so we'll do the easy one first. That is not working. That is still not working. Wait for it. That is still not working. That is a trapezoid. You'll notice those little pesky arrowheads. John, what do those arrowheads mean? Uh, the parallel. Outstanding. So what would be your definition of a trapezoid? Emma, let's pick on you today. What is that thing? Um, That's a great start. Can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. Is that a parallelogram? Because we, I noticed that in the other shapes, we started with a parallelogram and then everything else was a parallelogram. Is that a parallelogram? No. no. So starting with it being a quadrilateral is perfect. Keep going. Now, I did throw in the word exactly. And the reason I throw in the word exactly is because depending on the textbook or the person that you talk to, there's two ways to define a trapezoid. The way we did it, or you could say at least one pair of parallel sides. To me, that was always confusing because then sometimes a trapezoid would be a parallelogram, sometimes it wasn't. Too confusing, so I just went with this. Exactly one pair of parallel sides. Thank you, Emma. All right, so let's get some more terminology down here. Those parallel sides are called bases. It's not always sitting on its base. They're just the bases of the parallel sides. Any guesses what the non-parallel sides are called? Uh, nope. I don't really know why you would know this. I just thought I'd ask. They are called legs. And so we have two pairs. Question in the back. Yes, sir. Ask it, ask it loudly so they can hear you. Is it possible that we see the trapezoid but rotated 90 degrees? Heck yeah. It could be sitting on one of the legs which is confusing for people because when you hear the word base, you think it's always sitting on a base. It doesn't have to be, it's just base by definition on the parallel side. So I take that puppy and rotate it, even if they're going like this, still the base, okay? Uh, we have two pairs of base angles. Now that seems confusing, but T and R are one pair of base angles because they're attached to the same base. P and A are the other pair of base angles because they're attached to the other base. Okay, there's one pair of base angles. There's the other pair of base angles. And I actually made a mistake, I'm gonna go back a little bit. I made a mistake here. And the mistake I made is I labeled angle P and angle A as being congruent. We don't know that they're congruent. In fact, they're probably not congruent. Okay, so it should be something like that, different markings. They're just base angles, they're not congruent to each other. Am I going too fast or are we okay? Give me like two seconds. One, two. <laughs> Classic. Okay. okay, you good? All right, let's talk about what makes a trapezoid a trapezoid. Other than what Emma already told us in that it has one pair of parallel sides, the only other interesting thing about a trapezoid is that the consecutive non-base angles are supplementary. Ooh, that's a lot to unpack. Consecutive means what? That it keeps going on in the next one. Yeah, keeps going on to the next one. So the next one, an angle in the one next to it, which are non-base angles. Okay, so let's go back here. What does that mean? Get that out of the way, okay. Consecutive non-base angles. So if we take angle T, the consecutive angles to T are R or P. If I choose R, they're base angles, no good. 
If I choose P, then P is a consecutive non-base angle. They're going to be supplementary. Which when you see the picture is kind of obvious because what kind of angles are T and P? They are same side interior angles. T and P are supplementary, R and A are supplementary. We know nothing about the relationship between T and R and P and A. Okay, so we got that. And then there is nothing else about a trapezoid. Okay, that's it. Parallel sides and some consecutive non-base angles being supplementary. It's a boring shape. If I give you a trapezoid and I want you to prove that it's a trapezoid, you only got to show two things. It would seem like you only need to show one thing. It would seem like you only have to show that there's a pair of parallel sides. But you also have to show that the other pair are not parallel. Because if you don't, it could be a parallelogram. And we want to get away from parallelograms with trapezoids. Okay? Questions? All right, here's our, yeah, Chris. the non-base angles. So the ones that are on different parallel angles, or different parallel sides. Okay, so here's the hidden shape we're gonna throw in there. Let's change the trapezoid to an isosceles trapezoid. What's an isosceles triangle? Go. Good. So what would you figure an isosceles trapezoid is? Bingo. There's one right there. Woohoo! The legs are congruent. The parallel sides cannot be congruent. That will cause a world of hurt. So you see where we're starting to go, not starting, we've already dove into this relationship between shapes being other shapes. Are all trapezoids isosceles? No, are all isosceles trapezoids trapezoids? Yes, okay, good. And we'll talk a lot more about that in the future once we have all of these shapes taken care of. When you turn that trapezoid into an isosceles trapezoid, a whole bunch of new stuff happens. So, for instance, the base angles are congruent. So now, F, R, and G, O are congruent to each other. F is congruent to R, G is congruent to O. We still have the stuff from a trapezoid, so F and G are supplementary, R and O are supplementary, but now all of a sudden the base angles are equal to each other. I think this might be the first time we've seen the statement, if and only if. If and only if creates a reversible statement. Okay, we haven't talked about this, have we? No? Reversible statement is a statement that's true forwards and backwards. So if I say to you, if you are married, you have a wife. Is that a true statement? If you are married, then you have a wife. Is that a true statement? No. No. Why not, John? Uh, because if it's a girl, they have a husband. Yeah. If I say, if you, if you have a wife, then you're married. Is that a true statement? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it is, that example is not a reversible statement. In order for it to be a reversible statement, it has to be true forwards and backwards. So if I say, if you are married, then you have a spouse. That's a true statement. If you have a spouse, then you're married. That's a true statement. And that becomes an if and only if statement. That's my long-winded way of saying that this works backwards too. If it has a pair of congruent base angles, it's isosceles trapezoid. If it's isosceles, it has a pair of base angles. So we can do it in either direction. The diagonals are congruent. GR is equal to FO. They do not, however, bisect each other. They're just congruent. Okay, sorry, am I going too fast?
Okay, we're good? All right, now we introduce a new segment called the mid-segment. This gets a little confusing. This is true for any trapezoid, not just isosceles. And what a mid-segment is, as it says there, is it's a segment connecting the midpoints of the legs. So there, before we do the property, let me show you what the picture looks like. Okay, so there's a mid-segment. RM, raccoon mongoose, is a mid-segment. So R is the midpoint of HT, M is the midpoint of AS, and when you connect it, you get a mid-segment. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now, the important part is what the properties are in that second statement. Understanding what it is is one thing, but then it's got this weird property that it's, the, it's length, is the average of the two bases. And once you get that done, we'll go back to the, uh, to the example and I'll show you what that looks like numerically. We all know how to take an average, right? Mia, how do you take an average? Beautiful. And since the trapezoid has two bases, we're going to divide by two. Okay. Beautiful. All right, we good? Everybody caught up? Not yet. Okay. Let me know when. I'll take a drink. Okay, good. Give me the finger. Okay, we're good. All righty. So here's my example. It would be nice if I gave you the two bases and you all took an average, but we're a little bit smarter than that. So let's call this distance x. And I want to find the length of x. Take an average. So as Mia told us, you take the two values that you know, add them up, divide by the number of values. There are two bases, so we divide by two. That value has to equal 38.5. Will the value be bigger or smaller than 38.5? Bigger. OK, solve that then, please, and tell me what x is. Answer? Don't be bashful. 51. 51. Well done. Problems? Excellent. We're good? Okay, here we go. Our last shape for quadrilaterals is a kite. Now, you all know what a kite is. I would think you all know what a kite looks like. And what you think a kite looks like is exactly what the quadrilateral looks like. It looks like one of these guys. Except that one's turned on its side. However, and unfortunately, there is a ton of geometry in this puppy. We could spend 20 minutes arguing about a definition. I'm gonna skip that and just give you the definition. Then we're gonna pick that definition apart. A quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but opposite sides are not congruent. 
And each part of that definition is important to eliminate other things. That is not a parallelogram. Can't be. It's not a trapezoid. There's no parallel lines in this puppy. Two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Terminology-wise, this point and this point are called the ends. What's an end? An end is a vertex between the congruent sides. If you're flying that kite in the wind, it's the top and the bottom of the kite. What appears to be true about the diagonals? Are they congruent? Megan, yes or no? Are the diagonals congruent? Does IE appear to be the same length as KT? No. Okay, so that gets thrown out, which means it can't be a rectangle, but we knew that already because it can't be a parallelogram. Any other ideas? What appears to be true there? Daniel? Uh, angle EIT is congruent to angle CEI. Yeah. Why? Because the triangles are congruent, therefore the angles are congruent. Triangle TIE, turtle iguana elephant, is isosceles. Therefore, the base angles are congruent. Getting back to the diagonals, they are perpendicular to each other. And here's what makes it really difficult. One of them chops the other one in half, but they don't chop each other in half. In other words, this guy is equal to this guy, but this one is not equal to this one. And I have on the next slide a, a nice way to say that that's a little bit easier than that. Okay, so let's talk about some properties here. Diagonals are perpendicular. Got that. Exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So if we go back to this picture, angle I, this whole angle, is equal to that angle. Think of the uh, diagonal KT as a fold. You can fold that kite in half. And when you fold it in half, each part matches. Okay, so diagonals are perpendicular. One pair of opposite angles are congruent. One diagonal is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal. The diagonal that does not connect the ends is the one that's cut in half. Same picture with the explanations there. The good thing about the kite is we don't do a ton of work with them. The bad thing is there's a ton of stuff to remember about them that doesn't necessarily fill in with all the other quadrilateral. Make sure you don't get the kite, which looks like a kite, confused with a rhombus, which looks like a diamond, because they have different properties. All right, let's play around a little bit with this. Now, I'm going to forget about what the problem is asking you, and I'm going to take the same approach that I took on the homework, and that is I'm just going to go crazy on this picture and see what I can come up with. First thing I notice is that the vertex S and the vertex A are the ends. Okay, so I know that angle R 
is going to be equal to angle T. We'll see if that becomes helpful. I also have RT being equal to 24, so that's going to be 12, and that's going to be 12. That's the one that gets bisected, the one connecting the non-end vertices. Okay, so I have a bunch of Pythagorean theorem to do up here. So I'm going to find RS first. RS squared is equal to 12 squared plus 20 squared. Uh, can U4 over here solve that one for me? Thank you. And then uh, AR squared is going to be equal to 12 squared plus 12 squared. Can U5 solve that one for me? Yes. Thank you. I'll take a decimal equivalent if, if needed. I don't necessarily need the square root value. All right, what do you got for me? I thought R equals 23.3. Okay, can somebody confirm? Yes. 23.3 you said? Yes. Thank you very much. That makes sense. It's a hypotenuse. It should be bigger than 20, so I'll accept that. And uh, Usinko? No, still working? 17. 17, exactly. Okay, let me get a confirmation. I don't distrust you. Yes? Okay, 17 we'll go with. Beautiful. Okay, so now if I was focusing on the problem, I can find the perimeter by adding 17 plus 17 plus 23 plus 23.3 plus 23.3. Done. But let's keep going with the kite. Suppose I wanted to find this angle. Do some trig. Okay, I'd probably do tangent. Tangent of that angle equals 12 over 20. Do an inverse tangent there. Uh, suppose I wanted to find this angle. Okay, I could do um, the tangent of that angle equals 12 over 12. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, and continue on through the whole process. So if I worked hard enough, I could get every angle in that picture, every distance in that picture, and that's why I like to approach the problem this way, is I do all the hard work first, then I come back and see what it's asking me. Okay. The answer, by the way, is whatever that is, which is 80.6. Does that make sense? Well, that's 34 plus 46 point. Yeah, there we go. This one's a little easier. I don't have the diagonals there. In fact, this is almost ridiculously simple. This angle is equal to that angle. So 360 minus 62 plus 132, and then divide that answer by two, because those two angles are equal. Or if you prefer, call this x. Call this x and say x plus x plus 62 plus 132 equals three, whoops, 360. Whatever makes you happy. Mi casa es su casa. Okay, we're done.